So, there was a referral made to an expert urology center. Um, it was to Dr. Keane. Um, Mr. Smith is a 63-year-old healthy gentleman whose PSA has been increasing slightly over the past few years. What do you recommend as the next step? Could you see the patient in your clinic? Does he need a prostate biopsy? This was the question. What should Dr. Keane do now? Get the patient's... Oh, okay. <laughs> get, get the patient's medical history, ask for the patient's PSA history, order another test or an MRI, perform a DRE, or do something else. Vote now and... Vo oh, are we, are we voting it or not? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Vote now or vote never. Okay. Wait a minute. I'm slow. Oh, I've got it upside down. Okay. okay, so 30% would ask for the patient's medical history, 63% would ask for the patient's PSA history, and there was a couple of other suggestions. Okay, next slide, please. So this is your patient. He's a Caucasian gentleman, uh, non-Hispanic, no family history, atrial fibrillation, marathon runner, parents live to their 90s. They don't give us his age, but he looks about 70, 65. Oh, can you see it? Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah. Okay, it didn't come up on ours. Next slide, please. This is his PSA history. And you can see it's been bouncing around somewhat. The DRE, ordinary prostate, size, no lumps, palpable. I thought like everybody stopped doing DREs. I thought everyone stopped doing DREs. I still do DREs. I do too. Hands up who still does DREs. Well, guess what? The enlightened people are here. <laughs> oh, and I, when I go to meetings and I bring that up, people say, we don't do DREs anymore, and urologists say that a lot. Well, that wouldn't be. Medical oncologists don't even know. Never mind. <laughs> They're gone by the time they get to you, fair enough. So, does the patient need any additional workup? By that I mean risk calculator, blood or urine tests, MRI, prostate biopsy. I send the patient home and tell them there's nothing wrong with them. Okay. So, the options. Oh, hmm. I know what she wants, the risk calculator. Yeah. Okay, so risk calculator 38%. Blood or urine test, 19%. MRI, 31%. Go straight to biopsy, 6%. Send the patient home, 6%. That's interesting, all right? Next slide, please. So if you do the PCPT risk calculator, this gentleman has an 8% risk of high-grade prostate cancer. All right, next slide, please. Why don't we ask the faculty oh, yeah, go ahead. a couple of questions? Yeah. Um, that uh, how, how many, uh, Kareem, do you use uh, the risk calculator? Oh, I, I know that Sigrid does. I used to until we did an analysis and the calibration is way off. A way off. Way off. Okay, Sigrid, you wanted, uh, what, what are your feelings about the risk calculator? Are you have strong feelings? I mean, they're very simple and easy to use and cheap and available, and so, you know, it could be a good first start, maybe. So it's flipping in a coin, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in our hands, it vastly underestimated the risk of aggressive disease. They vastly underestimate yeah. the risk of aggressive disease. Okay. Next slide. Next right. slide, please. So... 8% risk of high-grade prostate cancer was the calculated risk. Next slide, please. Okay, well, so that's just, you know, what, what, does 8% risk make anybody nervous? Or what, what's, your, what, what's the risk that, that you would, in your mind, say this is something significant? I, I mean, you tell a patient, some of them it's 1% risk and they want it, and then other ones, others are willing to go to 8, 10, 20, who knows? Yeah, I mean, I think 8% is a, if... I would tell a patient that, that you, I... What would you do? I'd probably want to proceed further down that road. Okay. 
Dr. Yeah. Bella Dennis. Bella. Can you get out and use the microphone? There wasn't any. Well, I, this was just one individual. We didn't do a kinetics yet. Yeah, you showed it. He, yeah, yeah, it, it was sort of uh, uh, a flat line, if you look at it. It was up and down, up and there down, you go. up and down. There. Is that high risk prostate cancer? No, I, I mean, if I'm looking at that. Never know. You, I mean, you can't say it is or it isn't. PSA I, see, I see a lot of patients, and they're usually go, go to lawsuits. They have PSAs, 3.94. They go like that, and then one year they go up to 15. And we've all seen that, so this means nothing to me. But it, okay. PSA density is critical here. What's that? PSA density. That's a good, that's a good point. It's a test that's not looked at that often, as it should be. Yep. Yes, I, I use PSAD a lot. So let's, uh, let, let's ask Faye um, Stern, um, would, would you jump to an MRI right now? No. I think that, I apologize, I started catching up with my ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> Well, I hope you enjoy I'm it. Myself, I'm rewarding myself for working in the evening on the East time. Well. Um, absolutely not. Uh, I think that Stockholm study data that I presented gave us a very interesting, and actually this entire smart screening panel was put together thanks to Sigurd Carlson, largely. Um, and But I, I would say that the data coming from Stockholm study, the fact that when we use liquid biomarker before um, MRI, uh, this, the resulting decrease in MRI utilization by 36% gave us a great glimpse into the future. Now, obviously, we, have, we need much more data, but I think that... Uh, uh, it was a great glimpse into the future of how things will be five to ten years from now. So my um, MRI still requires a specialized academic setting. We are not at a place where MRI, MRI image quality is standardized mm -hmm. and acceptable universally. We are still struggling with that and there are uh, many programs undertaken by American College of Radiology and other regulatory bodies. Uh, particularly in Europe, Australia, on uh, improving uh, image quality of MRI. The bottom line, we still need, we still have a way to go for standardized high quality um, MRI and for standardized high quality uh, image interpretation. The bottom line today and for the next few years, I would expect we will see growing utilization of liquid markers prior to MRI. So I, I just want to say something. Almost selecting, almost like selecting patients for MRI based on liquid markers. That you can be done Faye, in the I, for, for those of you that don't know in the audience, Faye Stern puts on one of the best prostate cancer meetings uh, in the country. And they tech does. She's done it six years now, I think. Is that right? Something like that uh, coming up. It, you, you just heard one session, I'll tell you, that, that was jam-packed with a lot of knowledge yeah. about prostate cancer early detection, and her meeting is great. She's going to talk a little bit later in the meeting um, on some stuff with focal therapy. Thanks for being a part of this, Faye. Okay, okay. so let's get back to Thank the case. Give me, all right, so if the patient was 10 years older, his risk would now be 12% risk of high-grade prostate cancer, which is just a fact that it, the younger they are, not quite as high, but 10 years on, and he's 12%. And if, the, if this patient was African-American, there'd be a 19% risk of high-grade prostate cancer. Now, again, this is based on the one tool that we're looking at, and I'm sure there are other tools out there which might disagree with those. Kareem, would you... He would yeah. get an MRI at our place. He would. The yeah. first part, the, the first mark. Yeah. Yeah. Here's, here's the problem with all of this percentage. For every person, it, it's a different thing. You know, everybody's quality of life's different, things like that. Some, some people, 
you know, I'll go to any, I'll go to Las Vegas any day of the week with 19% odds, you know, so I got 80% shot odds of winning, any, you know, that. So I think that, you know, the other thing is physicians and their input, and Matt Cooperberg has the greatest slide, and I stole it from him, I'll use it tomorrow, <laughs> on pregnancy test. You know, it's yes or no, and then when you get a question mark, you get something that's in between, is it with this, what you do it. It's just another piece of data you got to enter into your mind. Yeah. Okay, so question. What should Dr. Keene do now? Should he do a blood test, a urine test, an MRI, a prostate biopsy? And we're probably not going to send the patient home. Okay. Vote now. Okay, so MRI gets a big vote here. Um, let me ask a question. The MRI, where would you do it? Would you do it in a smaller office? Would you do it in an academic medical center? Would you do it in a large lug group center? MRIs are MRIs. The machines are the same, but the people reading them aren't. So what would be well, the... Well, I would, I would do it where they have an expert radiologist to, to read it. Um, and, you know, I think that in a lot of... We had that discussion with the LUGPA thing this morning yeah. about the MRI. Uh, we have a group here that has a, a portable MRI. We, there's going to be a lot of things to, to look at. I, I still think that you know, we have some data will show that there's a, there's a reason to do something before an MRI one of the molecular tests and not me. If that test is negative, most of them have a very good negative predictive value. But, you know, that's, this is the trend we're in right now with MRIs. Okay. Any other comments? Okay. We'll move on. So, we get to the, the really confusing area because I had a look at this and I was, mother of God. And there's, there's, this, is, this does not make up the list that is available. This is only selected. And we're looking at did blood you based. Did say select? I did. Well, select about, is in okay, this as well. Now we know what we should get. No, no. <laughs> but you're looking at blood based, you're looking at tissue based, you're looking at post biopsy based. Um, it's just all over the place. And I, I think what Kareem said comes out here. I mean, which one are you going to use? There, I don't, I don't think we're going to answer that. He, I, don't, I don't think we're going to answer that here, but um, whichever one you're from, familiar with, I think. Mm -hmm. What do you think, Chris? Yeah, no, I think it's dealer's choice. I'm no. dying to ask Lori Klotz about his they're, test. They're all different, then um, I think you've got to look at the data and, and decide yourself. There's some strength and weaknesses. And okay, all. so let's look at the data. Select MDX in this patient in, are, indicates a very low likelihood for the detection of high-grade cancer on biopsy. In this patient, negative predicted value, 98% Gleason score greater than 7, 99% Gleason score greater than 8. However, if you move to the 4K score, you got a 40% chance risk of high-grade prostate cancer using that score. And Larry Klotz just walked into the room, so now you can ask him. You lion sack. <laughs> <laughs> well, but, but that just goes to show you, I mean, there's two very recognizable, well-known markers, and they don't show you anything close to each other. And that's why pretest probability makes such a difference, and we shouldn't over-test. Hmm. Well, they're different tests. One, one's uh, calocrine, and it's PSA-based, another one's molecular-based on DNA and things like that. So, and then the MRI. You may as well put it up here. So then there's an MRI, which is an option. And you can see there are three images here, dynamic weighted imaging, the ADC, and the DCE. And they all show a lesion in the same spot. So focal area of diffusion restriction, early enhancement in the right peripheral zone, 1.1 centimeter, the longest diameter. Overall, identified as a PIRADS-4 lesion, according to two readers, suggestive of a high probability of clini clinically significant prostate cancer. So the summary is we have a 63-year-old healthy man with elevated PSA. He has conflicting risk calculator and biomarker results and a PIRADS-4 lesion on the MRI. So you know what I think we should do at this point? 
is because this goes on. It's a really great case. It's maybe continue it after another session, but after uh, we have three abstracts, we got to. You want to do done. the abstracts? Yeah, I think we better do them because somehow, probably my fault, we got behind here. Well, thank you very much. You were an engaging but audience. We, got, yeah. we, got, <laughs> we didn't give you an answer because I don't believe there is an answer. But personally, looking at that, I'd take out that prostate. <laughs>